Hello, I'm Steve Larson, engineer with CAT Pumps. And once again, we're going to do another whiteboard session. And this time we're going to cover chemical injection. We're going to go over some of the basic ways that you can incorporate a chemical injection system into a standard water pump system and how each different way to do it affects the components in your entire system. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to draw a typical uh, pressure system. We're going to start with, of course, at the heart of everyone is a cat pump. And it's going to pull out of a reservoir or a tank to feed it. And then we're going to go to a regulator or unloader valve that's adjustable. And usually from there, then we have a high pressure discharge line. We'll put in a trigger gun and spray nozzle. And of course, we have a bypass that will typically run back to tank or back to inlet. We'll go over different ways to do that in a minute. But uh, what we want to do now is we also have a tank here of chemical. Let me put a C there so we understand what the chemical is. And somehow we want to get this chemical into this water system so that it can come out at the spray nozzle and enhance what we're cleaning or deodorizing or whatever the application may be. So let's just say we wanted to work with a 20 to 1 ratio. In other words, we want 20 parts water, one part chemical. I'm just going to put that up here so we remember what we're working with, 20 to 1. And so the easiest method, and we're going to make a little uh, chart here. So we'll write here the method that we're going to look at first is just putting the chemical in the tank. Now I know that sounds real simple, but we'll start with that because that's the easiest to do. In other words, I take my tank here and I put in 20 gallons of water and I put in one gallon of chemical. Let it mix up. Now when my system runs, the chemical is pulled up through the inlet line, through the pump, through the unloader, out the gun and out and applied where I need it. What this does is, is if I look at my tank, does it have the chemical exposed to it? Yes, it does. The inlet line, does that have the chemical exposed to it? Yes, it does. How about the pump and unloader? Yes, it does. And our discharge line. I'm just going to put a D for a DL for discharge line. Yes, it does. Then we have a gun in the system. Does that have the chemical going through it? Yes, it does. I know this seems redundant, but a little bit later on we'll see how the different chemical uh, methods will change these as it goes. And then of course we have our nozzle. And at our nozzle, we can apply this chemical at high pressure. So I'm going to put an H here to represent high pressure. We have high pressure nozzle when the chemical is being applied. So that's one method. Just mix it in the tank. Another method we can do is instead of mixing it in the tank, we put a an inlet injector into the system. So our next method is inlet injector. So what that'll do is that will pull the chemical in through here and this injector is usually located right at the pump inlet so that when this pump is operating it's pulling up fresh water out of the tank up through the inlet line and then this inlet injector usually has a venturi orifice that it draws vacuum and pulls up the chemical into it while it's running. So in this case, do we have uh, chemical in our tank? No, we do not. Do we have chemical in our inlet line? No, we do not. Do we have chemical at our pump and unloader? Yes, because here's where it mixes in and now it's going to be in everything downstream. So we're going to have chemical everywhere else. Now, this method also allows us to have high pressure chemical at the nozzle. So I'm going to put an H there. As you can see, we're filling up our chart here. 
What we want to look at next is another way to put it on the inlet injector. Instead of an, an orifice there, we actually have a separate little chemical pump that's actually pumping it in. So we could use inlet injector or a whole second pump there to get the chemical up here and pulled in. And that's the way a lot of places will do it as well. They'll have a secondary pump that pumps it in. And again, these all results are going to be the same. Now, a third way to do it is instead of this little pump being a low pressure chemical pump, we tie in a high pressure chemical pump that will tie in with the line right there. We better reconnect our inlet here so we can get water into our pump. And as it's pumping the chemical at high pressure, it will join the line down here. So we're going to put a, a second pump for the method. And again, we will not have chemical in our tank. This tank is still clean water. We will not have chemical in our inlet. We will not have chemical in our pump and unloader, but we will have chemical in our discharge line, gun, and nozzle. So these will become yeses. And again, we will still be able to have high pressure chemical. A fourth way to do this is to not have a second pump that has its own motor, but rather tie a pump off of here, off of the existing pump, that's also a chemical pump. But it's pulling the chemical out of here and it's running off a pulsation from one of the pump cylinders and that's called a pulse pump. So it's taking a signal from the existing pump and injecting this chemical downstream, just like the other one was, but it's not a whole second pump and motor system. It's a pulse pump that's operating off the signal of the main pump. And again, we will also have no chemical in the tank, inlet, line, the main pump, but we will again have the chemical in the discharge line, the gun, and high pressure at the nozzle. So that's a fourth way to do it. A fifth way to do it, I know it seems like a lot of ways to do this, but they're all ways that are done out in the industry. So for ease, I'm gonna move my chemical tank over here and put it here. And now what I'm gonna look at is a device called a downstream injector. A downstream injector is a venturi orifice that's placed right after the unloader in the plumbing system of, of the pump. And the chemical line is hooked right up into there. And what happens is, is as this pump is operating and pushing fluid out, this venturi creates a vacuum, pulls the chemical in. So now, with this one, we do not have chemical in the tank, no chemical in the inlet, no chemical in the pump, but we still have chemical in the discharge line and the gun. But the biggest difference between this method and the pulse pump is, is because of the nature of the venturi, I can only draw the chemical in when my nozzle is at low pressure. So I'm going to put an L here, and that low pressure is usually 150 psi or less. This actually is the most common way that it's done in the pressure washer industry. Usually your pressure washer will have a nozzle that you can open up to a larger orifice so that you can draw the chemical in. That's how that's done with this Venturi downstream injector. And finally, the last method I wanna look at is we're gonna move this Venturi away from there and we're gonna put it right at the nozzle. 
So what actually is, is your high pressure nozzle is actually a venturi in itself with a side port to come in and bring the chemical in. And so we're going to call that nozzle injection. And now we're not going to have any chemical throughout the whole system except right at the nozzle and it will be spraying at high pressure but you're limited to basically a zero degree pattern uh, because of the, you have to make the venturi work and if it's not that type of pattern the venturi doesn't work so these are the basic six ways that you can get your chemical from the chemical bucket to your nozzle that are out there today